I had a revelation when my daughter and I went thrifting on Tuesday. The reason that I can never, ever find this thrift store, despite the fact that I've probably been here half a dozen times, is that it's not east of the feed store where we buy our chicken feed. It's west of the feed store. So I'm always looking at the wrong end of the road. And somehow, even though I look up the address and use the GPS to get there, I haven't made the connection. So now that I know where it is, we can go there. And they're one way, it's a maze of one-way streets, which explains a little and the fact that I am completely and totally directionally challenged, especially when it comes to this section of town. I heard when we were at the estate sale with all of the phenomenal needlepoint and cross stitch covering the walls, that whatever soul didn't sell by the end of the sale was getting donated to Teen Challenge. So because I got distracted when we got stuck in the mud and didn't buy that Wysocki needlepoint piece that I had promised myself, I'm looking at all of the Teen Challenge thrift stores in the area to see if maybe, just maybe, it turns up there. Michelle Bendy, I'm also looking for that snow scene that you mentioned. I think the odds are slim. And if they do turn up here, they might be more expensive than they would have been at the estate sale in the first place. Honestly, I hope that someone found them at the estate sale, took them home, and is going to love them for years to come. But any excuse to go thrifting. I'm still looking, picking up all the Norman Rockwell. Sooner or later, one of these is going to come home with me. It's probably going to be sooner, and hopefully it'll be at a great estate sale, so it'll be inexpensive. I don't even think I looked at the prices of those. They weren't the ones that really caught my imagination. The one I saw last week with the woman knitting with her husband and son in the background, that's maybe the one that... I would have brought home, but I'm not going to hang one of these on my walls, so I'm not sure what I would do with it if I got one. And I'm not overly worried about it because at this point I'm just window shopping and window shopping is fun and easy and guilt-free. I did at the shop manage to avoid distraction and look at the framed pieces. There was no needlework. Not from my estate sale. There was a really ugly cross stitch piece on another wall, but I don't think I got a picture of that one. And there is that picture on the wall that I had hoped I could get a better shot of, but the camera didn't focus on it as well as it, I would like. My daughter found the most awesome octagon shaped 1970s hutch with glass all the way around that I didn't get a picture of. If that's still around when the stickers go half price, we're going to be figuring out how to load it into the van without breaking the glass. Here is my favorite 70s couch set from this adventure. And here's my favorite coffee table from this adventure. It's like a suitcase covered in old world maps. It's newer and amazingly scuffed up and they wanted a hundred dollars for it plus whatever they wanted for the end tables. So. It was pretty to look at, but not a serious temptation. And I don't have a coffee table because the ugly 1970s one that came with the house is now out in the yard with bee boxes on it because my young children had too many coffee table related bumps and bruises from their horseplay. So I don't have a coffee table anymore. I was surprised to see how much milk glass was at the shop, which usually on the rare visits, I make to the shop does not have a lot of vintage. I think this is real milk glass, but I'm not super clear on what the rules for what is and is not milk glass is. I just go by, does it look like what was in grandma's collection? And it does. I have grandma's collection all safely boxed up for a day in the future when my house is calmer and I'm brave enough to put it out and I'm going to have to buy a piece of furniture to display it on, so that's the bigger problem. I could put it on the fireplace mantle, but that would mean culling what is already on the fireplace mantle. And I don't want to do that because I like what's there. Maybe in the spring I can pull out a piece or two and brighten things up. 
We'll see, I have all of these delusions about mantlescapes. Here's some more pretty vintage pieces. Like I said, this store, I don't visit it a lot, but they don't, they usually seem to have newer old stuff, not vintage old stuff. Thinking back, I don't know if I've ever bought anything at this thrift shop except for maybe some Goosebumps books for the kids back in the day. It is right next to one of my favorite thrift shops that always has tons of gorgeous needlework and vintage stuff, so I pop my head in now and then. I keep seeing those zombie plates with the recipe for the alcoholic beverage. The plan was to film upstairs, which is cavernous and creepy and I don't like going up there alone but on this day it was chained off and that's where the framed pictures have always been so I don't know if they are reorganizing or quite why upstairs was closed. I like this cat quilted cat vintage kit and I was almost briefly tempted but the odds of my actually stitching it are slim, and I don't know what I would do with it if I actually stitched it besides putting it on the bed up in the sewing room where it could look cute. So I talked myself out of it. It didn't take a whole lot of talking. Lots and lots of pre-cut letters for scrapbooking. The craft section here is, this is actually the most I think I've ever seen in their craft section, which is not saying a lot. Some scroll frames and a big hoop and some panning down I know it's coming trying to time the narration with what's on the video is always challenging here there it is string 99 cents each it's overpriced and it's not string and that probably explains a lot of why I don't find much of the shop and why I don't go back to the shop very often. Here was a sewing basket that still had the stuff in it and it got my hopes up for a brief moment but all that was actually in it was a pattern and a thimble and some scissors that aren't even for sewing those were those decorative scrapbooking scissors which I have a whole setup from back in the days when Costco carried them and it wasn't a cute box anyway so that's the sort of thing we look at estate sales for because we're much more likely to find it there than in the thrift shop. Thanks for wandering around with me. I am Michelle with Michelle's Romantic Tangle. I had hoped to make it to the third Teen Challenge thrift shop, but after these two, my day kind of got derailed and went to hell in a handbasket. So that didn't happen. I'll go back next week, and if I can find parking at this one, I will see if maybe upstairs is open and maybe there are pictures up there. This is the one that was closest geographically to the estate sale, so maybe the stuff will wind up here, or maybe not. Either way, it's just... It's an excuse to go to the thrift store, and any excuse to go to the thrift store is a good excuse to go to the thrift store. I seem to have kind of lost my ending there. Thanks for watching. I'm Michelle with Romantic, Michelle's Romantic Tangle, and now I've lost my ending and don't know who I am. I'll be back with more videos soon.